So we're using the Octatrack as a four track looper. What happens is you have four tracks here, which record into four tracks here, and you have four ins and four outs, which are routed individually. So you get four mono ins and four mono outs. So track five to track eight are through machines. And you can see here, they say T, and these through machines are basically to monitor the inputs. If you look at them, you can see that um, they're kind of panned. The balance on this is on the left, this one's on the right, left and right, because they are outputting to different outputs. So from there, each one records to the corresponding flex machine. So here's A, B, C, D as well. It gets its input from each of the through machines. So if you look at this and you go to record setup, you can see that in AB, in CD, there's no sources, but on source three is uh, through five, track five, sorry. So which is the through machine. So as with all track six, track seven, and track eight. And you can see that these are going out through the Q outputs as well. What you'll need is a MIDI pedal capable of sending multiple MIDI messages. So you can't get a MIDI pedal that can just send one MIDI message per press. You need to be able to send multiple messages per press. And here's a list of pedals that support it. You can find them in the description. And if I missed any out, please feel free to put them in the comments. Now I have a few MIDI pedals, but my favorite is the Singular Sound MIDI Maestro. And there are a few reasons for this. The MIDI Maestro is fairly easy to program on the smartphone via Bluetooth. There are individual screens for each pedal switch, so you can clearly see which pedal is going to do what. And you have pages as well, which mean that the pedals can change their functions depending on which pedals you press. And you can go back to other pages as well, and that's a really powerful ability. The key to all this is using patterns to record. Now, patterns is one way to record. Say, for example, right now I have four tracks that are playing four tracks. You can see a playback trick here for each one saying that, okay, let's play back whatever is in the record buffer for length of 64. So the trick is to use one shot tricks on the track that you want to record in a pattern. So it might sound a bit complicated right now, but I'm going to show you. Pattern one is just a playback pattern, which means all the tracks are just playing back. These four flex tracks are playing back. And you can see in the record tricks, there are no record tricks on any of these patterns. So if you exit that, you can see the playback tricks on all the patterns. Of course, the playback tricks on all the through tracks to enable them as well. Now, the trick here comes when, let's say, go to pattern two. Now, in pattern two, I want to record track one, for example. So if I go to the recording function, you can see that there's a one-shot trick here, one-shot record trick. Now, how do we get one-shot record tricks? We press function and the button itself, and you can see this yellow, that's a record trick. Yellow is a one-shot record trick. Red is a record trick that constantly records, and you can turn it off. So this one is a one-shot record trick. So in pattern two, you can see that the one-shot record trick only occurs in track one. And if you go to pattern three, you can see that the one-shot record trick doesn't happen in track one. It happens in track two. So what happens is all patterns are a copy of each other except for the track that I want to record, pattern 4 has a record trick on track 3, and pattern 5 has a record trick on track 4. Which means if I want to get the recording done, all I have to do is select that pattern and that record trick will trigger. Now the problem is, it's a one-shot recording trick, which means that it only happens once. Now here's where the multi MIDI function pedal comes in. Because if you want to record again, what you'll need to do is to reset tricks. Now, okay, I've got my I've got my Octatrack Mark II 
user manual here which I always keep with me and always refer to and in the MIDI section there is a list of MIDI commands and what we need to know is the MIDI command to arm the one-shot record tricks and in this case it's a uh, CC recorder all arm so CC 54 so right now if I have a CC 54 right before I select the pattern because you can select patterns via MIDI CC I have a CC 54 triggering the reset of all the one-shot tricks before selecting the pattern which means every time I select the pattern it will record it and if I don't want to record anything I can go back to pattern one one thing to notice here is that the playback trick is on grid so you just press the trick press left or right it's on grid but if you go to the record trick right track Let's go to pattern 2, for example, track 1. Let's look at this record trick. It's just really slightly to the left, which is the, the shortest uh, resolution you can have, which is minus 1 over 384. And the reason I have that is that because they ha happen simultaneously, if they happen to be on top of each other, sometimes you hear the old playback before it's being recorded over. But if we shift it ever so slightly to the left, what happens is the recording is going to be before the playback, which means it's going to clear the buffer before it can play back any of the old stuff, which means you don't hear your old stuff playing over your recording. And that's pretty important. So now I'm going to demo the method and you'll see it work. I'll press start on the pedal and mini log record and we'll wait till the next cycle so you hear the mini log being recorded and playing back now we go sub I wanted to record a different bass part. I'll just press it again. 